Hello everyone. So before we get into the actual level design process, I wanted to do another little kind of, I guess, a stressor, not a stressor, but really emphasize the point of naming and organization and how very vitally important it is. So I set up a little block out test scene real quick, just to kind of give an example. If you look over here in the outliner, I didn't name a bunch of them, so if anyone else were to try to come in, or even if later on you get to build another stuff, and you're like, I need to come back over here, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Cylinder 10, where are you? Cube 14, completely unintuitive as to what that is. So as you're building, it is very important to name things so that you can come back to it later on or be able to find it if you wanted to come up here. And I want to alter the door all the doors. If I wanted to alter all the doors, I'd have to go and find it. I have named a few of them just to give an example. So, up here I have a folder where I have named a few of them. Now you'll see it says SM underscore door. This stands for static mesh door. So this is a descriptor of the object type, which is a static mesh, and then the name of the object. So if I click this, it pops up where the door is. This is the house base mailbox, and just at a, a glance, I kind of know what I'm going to be looking at. So here's one window, two window, the roof, etc. All the other stuff, no clue. I'd have to go through, I'd have to go and find the actual one, click it, and then, oh, okay, it's this. But if I wanted to affect all of these at once, I couldn't just, well, I could probably because it just, okay. So no. I think that's all of them. One, two, three. Yeah. See, it's, it makes it more difficult later on, especially if you got a bunch of stuff like this, which normally this would be grouped. But uh, still, the naming convention is very important to be able to find easier what you're doing, especially for other people. Like if you got a texture guy or a material guy and he's going through and you want him to do all the trees, all the leaves on the trees, but he has to go through and find out which cylinders are the trees. Instead of just being able to go, let's see, SM tree leaves 01. Now I know, okay, these are tree leaves. And if you name them all that same similar way, tree leaves 02, 03, it, it's very important to, for naming. It helps organization, helps you out, helps your partners out. It's something that I've kind of slacked on because I typically work on stuff by myself, but it has shot me in the foot on multiple occasions, which is why I want to go ahead and stress very important, especially once your project starts getting pretty big. If you've got a whole open world and you've got nothing but cube, cylinder, blah, 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 you're going you're gonna to hate yourself. <laughs> but it doesn't just apply to static mesh. So SM underscore is for the static mesh, but every asset type in your project has a prefix and can have a suffix. So for instance, blueprint actors, this is BP underscore name of the blueprint. Uh, materials are very much the same. M underscore for material. If they have, let's see, material instance, MI. Material functions, MF. See, SM, SM, SM. T underscore name of the texture, and then the further descriptor. I think this is an alpha. These are just prototyping stuff, so they don't really... But when you're bringing stuff into your actual game, you want to make sure as you're creating it or as you're making it, you want it to follow the right naming conventions. Very important. We'll help you out later. BP underscore, et cetera, et cetera. And when you create, for instance, like a blueprint actor, that is a BP underscore, a character, also BP, BP, PC underscore, blah, blah, actor component, AC underscore for actor component. You basically take the asset type and take the letters that describe it. Unless it's one of these because these are just blueprints. Uh, but in order to it really give you the breakdown, I'm going to link this in the description box below. It is Unreal or Epic Games recommended asset naming conventions. It'll give you the full breakdown. Uh, 
provide multiple ways for your team to locate an asset when searching in the content browser. It gives you every single asset type and the recommended naming convention to get industry standard. And that's what we're going to start doing going forward. I realized in my last, my previous videos, they were kind of by the seat of my pants and unguided, uh, unprofessional almost, dare I say. <laughs> um, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to, I want to try to put out the best, the highest quality stuff. I want it to be as industry standard. So for those of you who want to go indie, you'll know exactly what to do. For those of you that want to go into a studio sometime, then you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with all this. Uh, I will link this down below and we will, in the next video when we start building our level, we will be naming things as we go in the industry standard way. So yeah, look forward to that. I do. And I will see y'all soon. Bye.